Um, right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, this week, we're going to be working through Chapter 17 of the book, Outstanding User Interfaces with Shiny. Uh, this week, um, Trevin's going to be taking us through the content of the chapter. And um, we're continuing from last week, where we are we're currently like working through a um a kind of case study of how to create a um html template based on a javascript library called tabler well an html library i guess um right uh yeah and if you'd like to to, to take us through it trevin that'd be great thanks sure thanks for us um I'll go ahead and share. Uh, I think today we'll probably mostly be going back and forth through the chapter and then the um, code in GitHub uh, and kind of stepping through uh, the process and each each of the different parts of the of the uh, template. Um, so let me go ahead and share. Um, last week's chapter, so we went through dependencies last week, and that was a little shorter. Um, there is more content this week, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how much time it will take up this week. I guess it depends on how much uh, commentary we have and and how much we dive into everything. Um, but yeah, I can go through and do an overview of the how we create the templates um and then we can dive in and answer any questions or or follow follow through and um research a little more if if we want to um let's see and apologies I'm not sure if you can hear it on your end, but there is construction going on outside. So if that is an issue, um, let me know. Hopefully that's not too bad. To be honest, it sounds fine at the moment. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so for, for this chapter, we take a look at um, the continuation of of the Bootstrap four template, and in particular, we're we're going to be focusing on uh, the dark compressed template for this chapter. Um, and at the end, the author leaves it up to the reader to try out different uh, template examples. Um, I only worked through uh, what was on the chapter. Um, let's see. So there's nothing, uh, no, nothing fancy about the tabler layout. Um, uh, as usual, let's inspect the HTML. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this is, this is what the, um, what the HTML code looks like for, for a tabler. Uh, I didn't get a chance to look at the, at the other ones. I'm guessing it's, they're not too uh, dissimilar uh, from that one. Um, but there's two main components, uh, the header and the content. Um, the header includes uh, some navigation and uh, the content is uh, the body um, as well as the footer. Um, so that's the main, uh, so yeah, like you got the, the header info and then the, the footer. Um, That's kind of the main layout that uh, we'll be working with through this example. Um, let's see. 
So we we designed the the page layout. Uh, this is the basic structure of HTML. Um, and uh, since this since Shiny handles this on the fly, we don't need um, the HTML tags. We can just um, construct everything with the tag list, um, including the head and the body. Um, so when we look at the when we look at the code for um, the for the R code in this, uh, we'll have we'll build a tag list with different tags, um, different parts of the body and the head, and uh, we have we have different. Um, tags in in the head um depending on the purpose um let's see so they talk about the meta tag here and oh, let me go so i'm going over to the uh, example code on github at the top are the dependencies that we went over last week um, and here we get into actually creating the HTML. Um, so yeah, there in creating the the head and the body, there are different um, different tag types. Uh, meta uh, link is another popular one. Um, I'm I'm curious. Uh, maybe we already went over this previously, um, but are these tag types? Um, are those like default HTML, um, or is that something created by uh, the Shiny developer? Like. Is this just it's being weird, a... though, isn't it? I mean, it, 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 I, I can't actually see these meta tags in the like the example code that they showed. You know, in the first figure of the um, is it? Oh, oh um... because it's in the head, right? And they had yeah, they don't have expanded the head expanded. In there, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. My fault. Oh, oh, that's why that's why we don't see it here. Uh, oh, yeah. I, that was just something I was uh curious about. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question, though, Trevin. Is like how much of this is standard and how much of it is kind of template specific. Um, yeah, like character set and viewport those are probably standard but i don't know they've got some seemingly weird thing like robots i don't know what that is um oh is that oh right here line 95 yeah i think it's it's something to do with web crawlers i think oh right um, for the like, famous no index yeah yeah uh, um yeah anyway so i guess to uh expand on that is that one in particular is this saying like don't allow uh robots to crawl the site or yeah yeah um yeah it's like it prevents your um it's something to do it like it prevents your site from getting overloaded with requests or something like that um and also i think it prevents people from no well, maybe not people it prevents um 
um, crawlers from going from your site to other URLs that you've that you mention in your site or something like that. Um, I, I'm not entirely certain exactly what how it works or anything like that, how it distinguishes a crawler from a real person, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I I saw in the book, um, so in the book, they explain a few of these, um, I guess some of the more important ones, like uh, being able to describe the encoding, uh, which is a way to display uh, the characters on the page, I believe. Oh, uh, welcome, Oluwafemi. Uh, we we're at the we're not too far into the chapter, so um, uh, you should be able to follow along pretty easily. Um, so we're going over the the heading, header, and the body portions of the HTML. Um, yeah, so UTF it, UTF eight is a safe choice. Um, I think ASCII might maybe another option. Um, I'm not too um, keen on all the different encoding options. Um, just seems like the default is a good way to go. Um, there's another tag, the the viewport uh, meta tag um, handles how it's displayed in uh, different scenarios. Um, and then we can um, set the the favicon. Um, and I believe I believe like if you look at my um, browser here, you can see the different uh, favicons um, from other websites. Uh, that's uh, so that's kind of what gets displayed um, when you set it there. Uh, uh, what? So yeah, it goes over. Um, it goes over a few of those examples. Um, here's just a portion of the code. Um, and then the author uh, took out uh, quite a few of the tags just for to save space. Um, so we have the we have the head on top and then the body um, on the bottom. Uh, oh, another uh, interesting part. Um, the author says, as they're not mandatory, we don't create dedicated parameters and pass all the elements uh, through the dots. Um, so if you're creating, if we're creating this uh, bootstrap dashboard template to be available for Shiny, that's basically giving the Shiny developer um, free range to to um, edit and design the the uh, dashboard template in their own uh, their own manner with those dots and being able to like uh, change it to their to their preferences um, yeah it feels uh, I'm still not used to coding or, or creating code for like other developers. So that's still uh, like relatively green concept for me. Um, yeah, so that's that's the basic like overview of um, like the body and the head. Uh, if we go back here, we might be able to like uh, take a look at some some more of the details. Um, 
I'm not sure if, uh, if anything else interesting stands out besides like uh, the robots. Um, I think there, I think it's interesting. There are a couple meta tags for the uh, Apple mobile um, capabilities, um, which is different than the mobile web app capable capable um but yeah that's uh that's the basic overview um and then we we add the we add the dependencies um in the body and then create our um, tag list using the the head and the body tag. Um, any uh, any thoughts or or comments um, about this like first section here? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean it. It seems, it seems all quite reasonable, really. I mean, it's like, so the, the, the triple dots there, you're like, it's just a way of passing any number of named or unnamed arguments into a function, and they just get passed along into the, to creating the body of the, um, sorry, yes, the, the body as far as the HTML page is concerned, rather than the, 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 content containing body of the um uh dashboard but because he was quite keen, keen to distinguish the header and the body of the app from the head and body of the html page but yeah no it all seems fine um yeah oh, oh. and um i should say the other in, in addition to the dots, there uh, uh, the default for uh, the dark theme is set to true, and then uh, the developer can sup uh, supply their own title and uh, favicon. Those aren't uh, those aren't set for any defaults. Oh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Um, I I did think this comment was interesting. Um, after creating the head and body tag um, and testing it out, uh, the author did uh, add this note when testing. Uh, in production, you should avoid this as much as possible because of security issues and the bad readability of the code. Um, and I think that was for this example here. Um, maybe because that's just inserted, inserted like right into the uh, same code and not like elsewhere. Um, I guess that's the um, danger in doing that. Uh, so, uh, so I won't go through that here, um, but uh, it should work like a charm. And then we get into um, into some more of the contents. Excuse me. Um, this is so. This is the uh, body um, again. Uh, the dots and the the footer is um, is dedicated for the future uh, footer function that we will uh, create. And.
and I think this is just creating an additional body. Um, like if we go down to the example, um, I think that's that's what shows up. Um, and then I skipped over the footer. Um, that's the additional. Uh, that's the additional thing we add here. Uh, Um, and for the footer, uh, the the parameters are left and right, so we can have uh, different parts of the footer. Um, in the example, one is, I think, text, and the other is like a link. Um, these uh, these classes are are interesting um, because I'm not I'm not really sure what all of these mean. It it looks like uh, it looks like Greek to me, but um, I think it's just um, showing how the text is aligned on the footer. Um, uh, yeah, and this is like this. These are like they're like bootstrap yeah. classes, aren't they? For um, maybe row isn't, but the coal LG auto and things like that down at the bottom are all kind of um, they're quite common in bootstrap based HTML pages. Um, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what they mean, though. Um, but yeah, is the the mostly just to like so that the 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 CSS theming stuff can work out how to put the content in the right position or with the right styling and things like that. Um, okay. Um, yeah, that if if I were to go through the exercise, I would I would start with that and then if i i wanted to uh, change anything that would be something i would have to like look up myself to see uh to see what other options there are um let's see oh uh, and and the author does go through some of them uh row means all the elements are aligned in a row uh text center and uh, align items center, handle the text and content centering. And then uh, uh, we display the elements in uh, reversed order. Okay, so, um, so here the author adds um, some body content and then a, a footer with our left alignment and uh, right alignment. Um, so we're building up our, our page um, where we have a link in the bottom um, and just some text. Um, the, the rest of it is um the rest of it's similar we're we're just like building each element up uh like one out of one at a time um where we will add the navigation bar at the top um and then the dashboard has different card elements and uh uh ribbons as well which are like longer and uh skinnier than the cards um and then finishing off with with icons um so for the for the navigation bar uh, we create a new function called table tabler header um and uh there's uh there's four parts to it uh, the logo uh, navigation, some uh, drop downs, 
and uh, extra elements. Um, and this is probably also a good uh, I'll pop this in the chat, but if you had it had a chance to look at it, um, some of the bootstrap for um, documentation uh, for for more for a deeper dive into some of this stuff. Um, so that might be like, so when we do create this navigation bar, that, that could be something that the shiny developer goes and, uh, makes extra tweaks, uh, to the navigation bar. Um, but we, we set it, um, we don't, we don't have any, uh, defaults, um, except I guess the navigation menu. Let's see. So here we have uh, two different tags. Um, header and the container tag. The ladder has four children, uh, toggler, brand, drop down, and uh, nav menu. So I don't know if it would be helpful to um, go over here at this point or keep walking through this um, text. Uh, this is the body, the foot. Some examples. OK, so we'll have the, uh, the toggler. Uh, for small devices, um, brand elements, drop down, and the nav uh, nav menu and the container. Walk through some of this. Um, I'm not sure why it says must not be removed. Um, maybe. I think it's a, just an accessibility thing, really. It's like um, these are the little, um, it's like a way of presenting the nav bar as a little menu that you can expand out or not if you're on a mobile device um yeah um seems i mean it's it does seem strange that it says must not be removed on you know given that i don't know i don't think shiny works that well on mobiles but um i know that there's examples towards the end of the book where he tries to show otherwise but um yeah uh it's it's just a necessary thing because it's hard to view the whole nav bar without that, uh, you know, on a mobile device. Um. So I don't know. I don't know if you know this answer, but um, like for example, if it if this wasn't in the code would it not show up or would it act like a uh like desktop mode if i don't um, off the top of my head i don't know i i suspect it would behave like a desktop would though um but... yeah that that's my hunch as well. I'm, I'm just that's it's curious that. Uh, what is the what is the toggler in the in the page actually? Because like, I I was thinking intuitively that somehow it's just like defining the display at a certain breakpoint. Like you know, if the screen gets to be a certain small resolution, then the nav bar gets replaced with the the hamburger menu. But 
uh, looking at the HTML, it it looks like it's actually there's a, there's a button, there's a div, but I'm not seeing it in the in the interface. Um, does anyone have a link to the example off? Uh... I've I've got it downloaded locally, but that doesn't uh, help. I was gonna say like. <laughs> I could check quick right now, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure where where an example would be right off, right off the bat. Um, yeah. So maybe a maybe an exercise for the curious. If you're if you're watching this later or uh, later during this. Um, during this talk um okay where where was i uh, we we have the different uh tags um the toggler is something that must not be removed um let's see. Uh, some some more stuff about uh uh bootstrap four and, and CSS. Um the uh the nav menu tag that corresponds to uh, that still corresponds to two, I believe. Um, and then let's see. These are all these are all still bootstrap for um, elements, would you say? Uh, So what is this uh what is this here saying if if there's something if there's something in the nav menu then uh create create this additional um Bootstrap for so it displays. Um, yeah, the um, the like the arguments the uh, the navbar function. Um, anything outside of that, the what is it? The brand stuff, the URL and the image, the nav menu tags and the nav write content will go in uh will, will be um pushed into this part of the code that you've highlighted now um which will mean it will like add an extra tab for each of them i think okay um Thank you. Um, brand tag is also uh, optional with uh, the nav bar brand main class. Um, so if the URL or the image uh, is not null, then it will... Um, It'll create this brand tag. Um, let's 
is is this um something that can be changed or um that's just how it's is created like it's just um pointing to uh the source and uh like the the class like the alt for this is brand image yeah it's um i don't know i mean it's it's i guess it it's changeable in the the brand image variable you've got there is an argument to this function so like the user can pass in the location of that image relative to the you know whether the the on the server's file system but um yeah uh um yeah so it is it is changeable and if you don't provide a brand image it, it simply won't add any content relevant to the brand image so you won't end up with like a, a weird stub on the um web page Awesome. Thank you. Um, let's see, I think there's a few more, a few more tags. Uh, the drop down tag. Um, just more uh, Bootstrap four. Okay. Oh, this is so. Uh, this is interesting. Um, the the container tag has to contain the four previously defined uh, children tags. Um, toggler brand drop down in nav bar or nav menu. Um, and uh, uh, tag append child and tag append children are. Uh, game changers to better organize the code and make it more maintainable. Um, so yeah, if we look at the overall like structure here, uh, we have the, the nav bar function um, with the header and the container, and then all these tags, uh, toggler brand, drop down nav menu, are um, uh, children of the container tag. Uh, and yeah, that that does look like these functions make it uh, a lot a lot more easier to manage. I am okay. Never mind. Container. I was wondering where container tag was first uh, created, but it's up here. And then we we add the the children. So this will only if I'm understanding that correctly. The container will only be created since it's dependent on, on all four of these if all of them are present otherwise uh it sounds like you may have either an error or or it won't uh populate Okay. Uh, hey, um, any 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 questions or um, any comments?
I'm just kind of, I think maybe this will become clear as we progress in the chapter, but I'm kind of wondering like when we're going to have, I feel like a lot of these, these tags could well have been functions that generate the tag and then have arguments because they clearly refer to variables, right? I'm wondering at what point we're going to pass a variable. So for, for, for example, the um, um, brand image, for example, right? That's, that's going to be a path to a to an image um brand url is going to be you know character vector with the with the url i would guess like um, i, I kind of see what he's doing like yeah he's like basically like composing the tags that we find um and sort of leaving placeholders in the form of variables but none of these tags are wrapped i mean they're not they're composed kind of as tags rather than functions that generate tags, if I can put it that way. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm still. I'm still like trying to grasp like the uh, the bigger picture versus. Um, like the more like minutia and like trying to figure out actually what like each piece is doing versus like the bigger picture. So I uh, am probably not the one to answer that. Actually, I had to, sorry, I scrolled down and I see in the 17.2.4, there's a, there's a function called tabler underscore nav bar, which, which is a function that has those, those arguments. Um, so uh, here. Or is, uh, Perhaps a bit above that. Um, it's immediately below figure 17.3. Okay. There you go. Um, and then is that somewhere else as well? Here's the full code. Um, a new menu, menu item. Okay, and then I'll skip, uh, I'll skip down to here because we are. Um, running, uh, running on top, on time or out of time. Um, yeah, this is so. When we do create that, um, uh, we supply the brand URL, the brand image, um, as well as uh. Um, some of the menu items. Uh, so when you go to the menu, that, that will populate and show uh, different tabs, uh, the, the body elements, as well as uh, the footer we had created earlier. Um, uh, so to pique your curiosity for upcoming uh, chapters. Um, at this point, you mar might argue that we did not even validate the template elements. Uh, for instance, going back to the nav bar menu item function, we find the following possible issues. Uh, what happens if the user provides an invalid tab name? What happens if the user accidentally activates two tabs at the start and uh, to uh, pique your interest, uh, that will be answered in chapter 20. Um, uh, so 
uh, you notice that even if the first tab is selected by default, its content is not shown. Uh, to fix this, we apply our jQuery skills. Uh, we must trigger the show event on the active tab at the start. Um, so yeah, that's utilizing jQuery to make sure that it's um, that it's shown. And uh, if we put that in the uh, in the www folder. Uh, this is interesting that a uh, custom input binding may perfectly handle this situation and uh, actually preferred. Um, but that's that's what that would will look like um, displaying the extra information. Uh, going going further. Uh, I'll uh, give like a brief overview of this um, uh, since a lot of this is similar, uh, but but using different elements. Um, so Tabler offers a large choice of uh, card containers, uh, the classic card, uh, which the author uh, says is like the shiny dashboard box. Um, with uh, with different elements to it, uh, you can check out uh, more features at the following link. Uh, and to uh, to be faster, we can use uh, HTML to R. Uh, but. We, so we create for the card uh, a function similar to the nav bar uh, with where we pass the dots um, and with uh, null defaults. Um, and so uh, similarly, we have uh, different tags in inside the function that we can edit um, as well as uh, a few different wrappers. Um, and then to make things uh, nice and neat, uh, similarly, we have the, uh, the tag append children and uh, tag append child functions. And then to display uh, to display things in a row, we uh, create a another function for that, and putting it together, um, we, we end up with something like this. The uh, the last part is is similar um instead of a card though we uh, create a ribbon um integrating the fresh freshly created ribbon component requires modifying the card structure since the ribbon is added after the body tag and no parameter is associated with this slot uh, we could also modify the uh, table or card function, but HTML tools offers tools to help us. Okay, so um, so we add to add the ribbon to a card. Um, Sorry, I'm just uh, I'm curious about this part here. Um, 
so we create a card and then this is um appending it to the first element of the uh card i'm uh not too sure about that one yeah it's the first it's the first child element of the card so it's the first element that's inside the cards um html thing um and it's what's it doing it's adding uh um the the ribbon element as the first thing there i think oh, okay. maybe appending it to what exists there so that's that's this part um mm. it has an info uh info circle uh, with the color so then um adding any any more children would just in, in, increase increment i'm guessing um and then and then lastly um uh just a just a note not mentioned before but we may include uh font awesome icons provided with shiny as well as other libraries um and Tabler has an internal SVG library as well, which is, I, I did notice this, uh, all the links to, to this page did not uh, work for me. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that's the gist of, of this chapter, the uh, creating the template elements from Bootstrap 4. Uh, I'll leave it to the reader, the listener, to try this out with different um, different parts besides the yeah. dark theme. Uh, but yeah, any cool. any questions or comments? Yeah. Having having read it, do you do you feel like you've got a good idea of what you'd need to know from a um from an existing kind of HTML template in order to make an R version of that? The just like the the kind of components of the page that you'd have to be able to um make available i think it's um i felt like it's a good maybe a good start a good um you know start with the basics and the in the main elements um i would still feel a, a bit overwhelmed maybe like <laughs> trying to create something else or trying to um, uh, create something, uh, you know, very custom. Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe that's just the nature of this book in general. Uh, like it gives you um, good starting points, but a lot of this is not just our programming but there's so much more to to learn but yeah i'm not i'm not sure what others uh think oh um anyone else want to chip in well, i thought it was basically interesting that this whole chapter seems to be basically writing html with r um, <laughs> yeah. and uh I don't know. At some like it's interesting one could do that, but at some point I feel like it just might be better, easier to write HTML. Um, although I mean, obviously you would lose then the the benefit of the template. Um, mm. But uh, and it's 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 kind of interesting. I mean, the the I guess the difficulty about this chapter. I'm sure the author chose you know a reasonable example, but it seems like. 
unless you know bootstrap and i don't um at least very well it's like all of these classes are kind of on nonsense uh you know it's, it's difficult to understand what the classes represent um yeah. but i guess maybe in a sense that's beside the point um because really you're just constructing h you know basically like my my take on this is open open the demo page and use the dev tools to inspect the page and then try to write r code that replicates the contents right and that's that's kind of the, the exercise which i don't know it's kind of kind of neat i have honestly never thought of doing something like that hmm. and i also have huge huge respect for the people who have now <laughs> you know hmm. the the absalon guys and the and, and david Oh, right. Well, anyway, um, yeah, uh, thanks for taking us through it, Trevin. Um, uh, we'll um, be back to find out how to write components that accept user input data um, based on the, the, the kind of elements that are available in ta a tabler um, next week. Um, well, I, I'll certainly be here next week, at least. Um, I know that a lot of you will be watching fire, well, maybe not watching fireworks at what, nine in the morning or whatever, but um, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, so I will, I'll see you then. And uh, uh, have a good week, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much, Trevin.